Hello and welcome to the Woman of Proverbs Wisdom Clinic. All of you that are joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am here today with my guest, Charmaine Harris, the herbalist. I always get this wrong. The International Holistic Herbalist Coach. Did I get that right? Yes, International Herbalist and Holistic Health and Wellness Coach. Yes, I am. Yes, amen. <laughs> And we are here today talking about an, a very important subject, and that is self-worth. And Charmaine's going to talk with us, and we're going to dialogue, and we're going to talk about how this affects your health, because how you view yourself has a lot to do with your perspective, and your perspective has a lot to do with how you think. And how you think is affected, whether you want to believe it or not, by what you eat and what and how you feel. So Charmaine's going to go ahead and open us up. So Charmaine, what do you have for us today? Well, hello, hello, Mr. Deer. Thank you for having me. And <laughs> oh, I definitely yes. want to elaborate on what you were saying, because the thing about health is like, you know, and that's why I'm a holistic health and wellness coach, because the biggest thing about that is you want to understand yourself worth and that starts you know mm -hmm. mentally mm -hmm. and the biggest thing about it is how we like you said how we look at ourselves how we perceive ourselves things like that you know that is super important because it it affects us if if we if we lack self-worth then you get anxiety you can get things like anxiety depression you know things like that especially if you are in a toxic and anxiety and depression and things like that that actually causes lots of um things such as you know your internal you know internal chaos to your to your to your gut and things like that so it's definitely important to make sure that you know yourself worth and understand and that's what i'm here to do just kind of basically walk um people through that process because anxiety and depression that leads to a lot of that leads to illnesses you know that leads to illnesses whether people know it or not things like that so that's super important but Thank you. And if you are catching this live, like I always say, you're supposed to be here. Make sure you have a pen and paper because I'm going to give you some really valuable information. So please ensure that you get yourself ready because it's going to be a super exciting night. All right. So you guys, I'm Charmaine Harrison, International Herbalist and Holistic Health and Wellness Coach. I teach people how to naturally detox their bodies using just nature in order to save money on medical expenses, in order to reverse health conditions, in order to transition from a diet mindset into an actual lifestyle change and to break the cycles of generational illness. So I do hope that resonates with someone. And as I go into this very, you know, broad topic of, uh, you know, self-worth and, and us ladies and men taking care of themselves and physically, mentally, emotionally, and, and spiritually, you know, I um, specifically named this topic self-worth because that's exactly what we're going into. Um, I'm going to be showing you some like holistic practices that as um, like, again, especially as women that we can implement to be able to upgrade our health and wellness naturally. Okay. So from a holistic practice, I found that um, simply changing what we're consuming is not the answer on a day-to-day -day basis. That, that's just simply not it. Because you may look better on the outside, but internally, you know, you 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 might be struggling with some things, you know, mentally, you know, and, and most people think, oh, I look good on the outside. I got this self-confidence. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. You, you know, you don't have any worries. And I kind of was in that mindset um, a few years ago. You know, I was serving in the military. You know, I, I, was, in, I was in shape, you know, the first few years. And, um, I was just like, you know, well, I'm good to go. My confidence up here, but it really wasn't in all reality. It really wasn't. And um, prior to a physical transformation, you have to make sure that you go into the mental transformation first. So when I explain things like um, the things that we're consuming on a day to day basis, it's not just um, the things that we're eating. So it's the things that we listen to the people that we are around, it's the TV, the music, the energy, everything that we do begins internally and it begins in a state of mind. And if we, we, and we have to dig a little bit deeper than just simply making a decision to physically look better. Okay. Cause that is super important. Okay. So for example, someone, you know, they can make a decision to go get surgery, right? So they go get surgery done. They come out of surgery after a few weeks. 
and they're feeling good for the moment. So that's an example. But are you really going to have the mindset to be able to sustain how, you know, the way you look? Because your habits and your mindset are slowly going to kind of draw you back and then you're going to kind of get to a point where you're like, well, you know, I'm not I'm still not good enough. You know, you're going to get, kind of get to a point where you feel like you need more. You know, OK, well, I got this done. Well, I need more. I need more. It kind of gets addictive after a while. But you're changing how you look, you know, externally. But internally, that's where a lot of stuff needs to happen. OK, so it's just like if someone lives a lottery. You know, they win the lottery and you hear about stories about people that win the lottery and they're broke. Like after two months, you're like, how? How? And it's because, again, they don't have that mindset to be able to um, sustain that wealth. You know, so a lot of things go back to mindset. And we often have to take in consideration, you know, the person as a whole when it comes to like holistic health and wellness. And it goes hand in hand. You have social factors. You have environmental factors, you have physical factors, you have spiritual factors, mental factors, emotional factors. You know, if you count all five components of holistic health and wellness, you know. But I'm going to go ahead and go into like a little story, a little background, because it's always nice to share, you know, and see if others can can relate. So I usually begin with questions, but today I'm not going to begin with questions. I'm going to start off with a story, my story. So as a child, I was adopted. Um, my foster parents, they were amazing. They were loving. They were absolutely, you know, phenomenal at uh, raising me while they were on this earth. Now, my father passed away right before my 16th birthday, and my mother passed away um, the day before my 12th birthday. And while they were actually here in physical form, you know, they definitely definitely emulated um, what a healthy household should look like. So you never heard them argue with you know, they may go tit for tat uh, with one another as far as like little comments, you know, like, you know, why are you left the refrigerator open? They go back and forth for a second, but there was never really any um, loud arguing or, or constant cussing or anything like that going on. And my father was, you know, he, he was a provider. He was the foundation. And my mother, uh, you know, he was the foundation of the household. And my mother was like the bricks, the mold, and the roof, all that good stuff. So she took care of the household while he was at work. Um, and he also was a retired Marine and currently at that time he was a truck driver. But I grew up in a very structured, disciplined, and peaceful home. Well, you know, while they were on this earth, it wasn't until they passed away that I saw what true chaos um, looked like in a household. So I had to, you know, go live with one of my oldest uh, foster siblings and their spouse. And on the outside, you know, a lot of people may think, oh, wow, you know, she, they look amazing. What a beautiful house. You know, but on the inside, it was the total opposite behind those four walls of that house. It was like, this is the total opposite, you know. And you would think, like, like what's going on, you know. So, um, actually, around the time I was 12 years old, there was a lot of cussing, yelling, you know, just, just screaming. So, it was a very huge culture shock for me to go from uh, such a peaceful environment to an actual um, lifestyle, um, to a culture of all the cussing and fussing and, and all that things. But as I got older, that became the new norm. My environment came, became my new norm. So um, as I did get older and pick up some, you know, learn behavior, you know, that kicked in. So you know how they say, uh, usually men, usually carry narcissistic um, traits. Well, it was the opposite in the household that I was growing up in. I was, um, that I was partially raised in, excuse me. It was actually the woman in the household um, that carried those narcissistic traits and that became a little embedded in me unconsciously. At the time, I didn't realize it, you know, that was a part of my environment. But I'm not sure if anyone of uh, you this have ever encountered a narcissistic woman. But uh, the word I can use to describe it is almost like a bully, you know, and it's like, if I can't get what I want, then I'm going to try to guilt trip you, guilt trip you, I'm going to cry, I'm going to scream, I'm going to might even try to fight you, you know, so that, that was one of the biggest things, you know, that I saw growing up, so that's exactly what my emotional environment looked like for a year at the age of nine, and then again, at the age of 12 to 18 years old, along with dealing with a lot of other forms um, of abuse from both ends. 
But I've learned over time, the trauma that we deal with in life can be from learned behavior or suppressed emotions that we held on, that we hold on to. And if you hold on to them long enough, 20, 30, 40 plus years, and we start to project that behavior, you know, through our relationships with others. And that's that, that when I learned that, I was just like, wow, that, that is so true. That is so true. But when I was a young adult, about 18 to 25, I remember just being so angry all the time. I was just like angry at everybody and everything. And there was a lot of rage. And I hadn't uh, realized how much that I was actually projecting that. So to any viewer, any viewers have you ever been through something um, so deep in all levels of your life to the point where you have even, you haven't even realized that you were kind of like lashing out, you know, because it's just, it, it gets to a point where it sort of becomes just a part of who you, you know, who you were, you know, but yeah, that was me. As a young adult, I was a ball of rage and I wasn't even realizing, you know, I was no better than a toxic environment that I had left, you know? So that's pretty, uh, that was a pretty big reflection moment um, for me. And I remember having, um, I was having a boyfriend. I was having a boyfriend at a very young age, all the way up until I was about 26. And I always felt the need to be with a man. Not so much um, sexually, however, I just always felt the need to feel safe. That's the thing about it. And I had, of course, when you're going through it, you don't realize it. But that was my biggest thing. I always felt the need to feel safe in a way because once I lost my father at the age of 16, that was it for me. That was it for me. Um, As far as males, you know, the superheroes in my life, that, that, that was gone. My superhero, you know, was gone. And I hadn't realized how that affected me. And going through that, ang that those emotions of, of anger and rage and, you know, caused me to pick up a lot of um, different different habits. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Have you ever known someone that that was, you know, they're they they seem to be always be in a relationship. Well, that was me. They always gotta have a man, that one cousin or sibling that always come to the to the family event every year with a new man or something like that. Yeah, yeah, y'all know who I'm talking about. Someone someone like that. But um, at the time, I never knew why I was like that though. I never knew. I just knew I always wanted someone. And that was a part of the problem. I wasn't specific, specific with who I wanted and what I wanted at the time. But the biggest issue, the even bigger issue was the fact that I didn't even know who I was first to be able to be in a relationship with someone. And that's the biggest thing, the relationship with yourself, I didn't know was the most important. I never knew self-speech was so powerful. I was going around singing all types of I'm the baddest, me lyrics and all this crazy stuff. Almost that's what I was consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. The music, the environment, the people I was around, allowing them to call me certain things. And I'm like, yeah, what? like it was, it, it was a lot going on, but I was so constantly trying to please other people. And that was another big thing. I was always trying to please someone else to the point where I neglected myself, but I didn't know what I was doing at that. I neglected myself. And yes, I stayed physically well kept. However, I didn't realize on the inside that I was so hurt and I was using basically um, my body as a storage space for all those emotions until there was no more space. And then I would just lash out. Just enough, though. I wouldn't latch all the way out, but just enough, you know, to, to some of the storage come out, but it's still full of emotion. So that, that, that was me. You know, um, that was me. And I'm, I'm sure someone can relate to that, you know, being that person that's always hoarding something in, in, internally and internalizing stuff, and then you just lash out, you know. Um, but yeah. But um, all these so-called relationships that I was in caused a lot of conflict internally because I was holding basically onto a voided space from my father and also fighting with what I saw, you know, the, re with the remainder growing up. I saw that that was my environment. You know, I found myself, even though, you know, I was raised up with a very narcissistic sibling, um, I found myself often submissive, doing the opposite, I was very submissive, and I don't mean like, 
grown, mature adult woman submissive to her husband. I'm speaking like high school peer pressure. Um, do what I say. I won't be your friend type submissive to any undeserving man. And um, I hadn't realized what I was doing to my mind. I didn't realize what I was doing to my body or my spirit. And the emotions were so deep when I went through like my longest um, healing period, even when I went through my longest healing period of like uh, three years at the age of 26, you know, healing, healing is a journey. That's not something, that's something that we constantly do. But that mainly opened up my eyes to dealing with the childhood trauma and my focus on where I wanted to be in my life, but specifically healing, you know, uh, for lack of what healing from the lack of self-esteem that I was dealing with. And I hadn't channeled that at the time. Even when I was going through that process, I, I hadn't channeled that at the time. I didn't even know it existed. So um, I'm not sure if anybody have ever heard of the term soul ties or, or womb healing, but overall it's the belief that um, after you um, sexually engage with someone that you're spiritually connected to them. Um, through the exchanging of energy. Yeah, that, that's deep. But <laughs> whether that energy is negative, depressing, anxiety, showing through stress, trauma, trauma, things like that. So basically, um, how many of you guys have ever like slept with someone and afterwards you had like a dream about them? Maybe it's the same night later on that night, years, months down the line. That's what that is. That's called a soul time, exchanging of energies. But there are various soul ties, but usually um, sexual is the most common one. And I knew nothing about this until maybe a few years ago. I knew nothing about this, you know, but there can also be good soul ties. So I don't want anyone to think, you know, in marriages and, and people that have, you know, beautiful soul ties in marriages and things like that. Um, You can have business soul ties. You can have, you know, so I don't want anyone to think anything negative of when I say that um, term, but I'm just bringing insight as to the frequent challenges that happen usually most mainly um within us that many people may not know why they experience certain things and it all goes back to mental and spiritual well-being again which is very vital um to our overall health and but knowing that that i had may have had um, some full times going on um that brought enough awareness to me actually to begin um, my practice of abstinence or, you know, um, just going on a, a, a fast. But the benefits that I've experienced uh, going through this process were it, is allowed, it, has, uh, it has allowed me to get to know who I really am. What I truly want, identifying red flags super easy, like super early, if I'm going, you know, going to the talking to someone and to be able to be okay with releasing that person early on doing the talking thing, you know, if, if I need it, if my energy, if my, you know, peace became disruptive, okay? So, you know, I get to shift my focus and energy on what's truly important in life. And it has allowed me to see what, um, also what a true healthy connection uh, looks like with other with other people relationship so you know to really see it and you're like oh wow that that's beautiful you know so you know we go through things in life and we just kind of well, we're never going to be in a relationship again I'm never going to do this I'm like we're always saying that stuff but no that's not what um being absent for me is about that that's not that's actually the opposite of what it's about is that it's about you know so when I'm able to get back into you know um relationships that I'm able to actually just go ahead and um, have that energy and go ahead and just focus on what's really important, you know. And I know when you're married, you're definitely, you know, not trying to hear the, that word absent, of course, but that particular portion of this message was definitely for those who are, you know, single and looking for closure if you're questioning your self-worth or even if you're married or your spouse or something has cheated. But, there, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a period of that, you know, when you're trying to find your way back to one another, the way back with one another. So that's super important. And I know, like I said, you know, but you, but through that process, you gain so much clarity. 
without, you know, clouded judgment, without all those things, you know. Now, I mentioned mentioned um, earlier about womb healing, which goes basically hand in hand with releasing um, soul ties. But this is definitely for all, you know, this is for all the ladies, all, all women um, being able to, because we, we do things like, you know, we carry babies. And that's super important. But, you know, single and married babies are not, no babies, actually. Womb healing can be done. It's basically a deep guided um, dive into your womb and unveiling the hurt and pain that we as women often um, carry down to bringing a life into this world because our wombs have been a sacred space. Definitely been a sacred space, but they also need to be cleared so that we're able to regain a true self, a true sense of self or, you know, self-freedom, basically. Um, but great ways to practice womb healing is through what we consume. You know, um, if we are having menstrual cramps that's on a thousand you should definitely change what you are consuming and have consumed, you know, and consume more from the earth. Um, if you're one of those women, women that, that are constantly emotionally dysfunctional as in, you know, because, you know, internally that, that does affect us internally. You know, you have to look at, um, look at it from a hormone imbalance point of view, okay? And that comes from lack of care. Um, and gut health and working on shifting your energy through something that you love to do. Parasites play a huge role in how we think, um, the things that we crave, crave, how much waste we carry in our bodies, which goes to my next point. Um, Self-care plays a huge role in our health. And I'm not just speaking physically because if you take the time to actually take care of yourself, mentally, um, socially, and emotionally, then it will naturally show, it will naturally reflect, okay? And I know that as a woman, we wear a million hats, and we are tired all the time, but listen, go find some time to get it done. It's super important. You want to look good, you want to feel good, but that starts mentally, you know? And even in my online program, by nature. I work mainly with women. However, I have been able to help um, other women all over the world. I know I uh, helped this young lady, um, well, she was an older woman in India. And she, I think she hadn't had a menstrual cycle or she was irregular or something for like 20 years. And um, I was able to get her, her menstrual cycle together. So she was able to to have a, another baby, she wanted to bring another, you know, human being into this world. So I was able to get her on another track through my herbal practice and holistic method that I actually teach in my course. But, um, and I also, I worked with a young lady who had twins and she was just so ecstatic and she's like, oh my God, you know, I give you a five-star review because when she went through my program, um, she was basically happy easily to have um, access to a lot of different things as far as um, my, my herbal program. So I gave her a lot of stuff that she was actually going to go ahead and become um, familiar with and be able to introduce to her family. So basically it was a family and family was awesome. Um, meditation is a part of wound healing. And if you are not the best at shifting your focus, then, you know, you may want to go through an extensive detox uh, program, such as the one I give, to be able to release that waste out of the body first. And then you want to start practicing um, the guided meditation because it is a practice and it does take some time to really hone in on. Um, also, as a woman, we go through a lot and there's a lot of uh, peer pressure on us daily. You know, and I, I understand it. You know, I understand it. I definitely do. Um, I'm here for you. But uh, if we can just get ourselves to a point where we are able to get set a solid foundation for the areas holistically in our health, you know, physical, spiritual, mental, and social, I think we'll be pretty much um, set to go. But definitely start with daily affirmations. You want to um, look at yourself in the mirror every day and tell yourself all the great things about you. Talk, talk to yourself. 
I was, I was talking about no, look in the mirror and really do it. I'm beautiful. I am, you know, you, you got to say these affirmations. And that, that helps too because, you know, you write them down, put them on post it notes, stick them all over your house, stick them in your car. These affirmations that you want to say, say about yourself, positive, beautiful affirmations. Turn on some motivational audio loud. Blast it from inner ear. Realize that, you know, right now, if you're struggling mentally, um, that it's not forever. You know, so so if you want to work out, and then that's just another thing, if you want to work out with your single mom, you know, or your husband's at work, then you can actually um, put the baby in the show and go for a walk at the park. You know, something small like that. Or, you know, have, if they're old enough, have them walk with you. You know, go for a walk at night time and before bed. You know, do a few sit-ups and leg lifts if you're able each day. Just do something to get your body moving, you know, so you're not sitting around stressed out all day, taking care of the house or working all day. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe, you know, you work and, and you know, the husband's at home, that's fine. You know, but you have to do something that basically helps out with your self-esteem, your self-worth, so you're not um, getting to the point where you're constantly getting sick because you're constantly stressed out. Stress kills people. You have to understand that stress kills people. People die the first thing Monday morning because they're stressed out. They're like, oh my God, another week. I don't have to, you know, I, I, well, I got to go to work. You know, people, that, that's serious. It's so serious. But, um, um, you know, just do things guilt-free. You know, because I know as a mother, we wear playing like, hats and we're going to do this and we're going to go do that. And, but when we, you know, we're constantly like, oh, I need a break. I need a break. But then when we get the opportunity to have a break, it's like, we feel guilty about it. So that's not something I want you to do. I feel your self-care is not something that you should feel um, guilty about. Go get your hand down and it. You know, start listening to those motivational audio. Start consuming, you know, um, start consuming positivity. If you have toxic people in your life, go ahead and cut them off. Seriously, go ahead and cut them off if you have toxic people in your life, you know. But if you are one of those women that just really need an overall adjustment in their lives with their, with their health, and you're ready to go through the process of really just upgrading your overall health and wellness naturally, then definitely book a call with me so we're able to discuss where you're at in your journey and how I'm able to help you not just achieve your goals, but actually exceed through your goals and maintain them. But if you're if you're wanting to do that, you can reach out to me at www.healbynature.org. You can in, um, email me at info at healbynature.org, Instagram at Charmaine Q. You know, I would love to help you to begin on your transformation journey of where you're at and where you're trying to go safely and definitely effectively.